video man my name is Yanoro I'm continuation of the learner wraps with peers program my diary of Parkers today we'll be looking at the day 8 of the world of them which is deep insecure deserialization so before we dive into this let us make sure we're connected with the VPN and deploy the machine so as always connect to the VPN make sure we are connected by getting this prompt then you can click on deploy to deploy the machine then while the machine boots up we look at the material we have provided so we need to understand insecure deserialization is a vulnerability which occurs when untrusted data is used to abuse the logic of an application simply insecure deserialization is replacing data processed by an application is malicious code allowing anything from denial of service to remote execution an attacker can use to gain a foothold in a dependency scenario so the material provided explains what this vulnerability is why it works and basically what we need to have a basic understanding of this vulnerability then you can head over to the objects you can read about this read about the deserialization it is quite explained well you can look at the cookies to explain how cookies work how they are crafted the likes then for this video we'll be starting from the cookie practical so we are told to connect to the vpn then we'll head over to this machine ip address so we'll try to go here okay then the instructions to follow are provided on this page you can read through them i'm just going to walk us through the page itself so we we'll start by registering so i'm going to register as root fish with the password of password then once that is done then we can check our cookie to so do this on chrome you can press f12 and it should bring your developer console or you can right click anywhere on the page then click on inspect then you can enter to our application to check our cookies on firefox and press f12 then go on that storage to find your cookies so for the first flag we are told it's in cookie value so we check our cookie values in our cookie value we have our username our password our user type then registration and session id now this itself is a vulnerability because we're not supposed to have our password display back to us in plain text in our cookie and our user type but well, this is not what the vulnerability is covering so we head over to the session id which has a vex 64 encoding so we'll copy it and try to decode it now you can use an online decoder to decode this but i'll be using the decoder in Kali. so yes in on your system there's and name it b64 decoder and encoder so what i'll do is echo and enter what we copied then b64 decode it and if you look closely we have the session id and we have the encoded flag which is thm with b64 so that's our first flag then the second flag says on the admin dashboard so going back to our cookie we can see that presently our user type is defined as user we can try to change our user type to admin refresh our cookie then head over to the admin endpoints so doing this we can reach here and we have our second flag and that's that about the cookie particle then we can move over to the next section which is remote code execution before you proceed with this we are required to change our value back to user then go back to our profile so i'll change the value to user refresh the cookie then we head over back to the my profile endpoints yeah. 
then as so you left click on the URL and exchange your view so you have to left click on this and if you watch closely in the cookie we have a new entry which is called encoded payload then we are told to click on you provide your feedback and we get this page and the rest of the page explains how the encoded payload works and how the decoding works so i'll just head over here and similar to what we did for the session id what we did was to copy the value out so we'll copy the value in the encoded payload and try to decode it to see what it contains so i'll do the same thing again paste it then p64 decode that and we have something that says replace me x defaults going back to our page we are talking about remote code execution so if you are not familiar with what remote code execution is you can head over to google and just for basic understanding search for remote code execution and looking at this remote execution is the ability an attacker has to access someone else's computing devices and make changes no matter where the device is geographically located that's basically what rc is you can read about rc attack you can do some reading to gain a better understanding of how rc works before we proceed we are going to start a listener then so start the listener using netcat so we start a listener on netcat clear this then set a listener on let's cut on port 4444 then we are told to go over to github and copy a code so I'll click on raw and just copy this code then this up then I will create a new file called rc.py and I will paste what I copied here now this requires us to change this to our triacne vpn ip so to find out your ip you can use ifconfig zone 0 then copy your ip address for me it is 10921180 so I will copy that and paste it here so that is that and you can save the file and exit and we are told we should run python 3 then the name of the file and we are going to copy what is in between the quotes and going back to this page our encoded payload we can change it to what we copied so we know the idea before we run this let me try to explain how it works so i'll call this the 8 so the application it gets from the web server it gets an included payload which is in base 64 so when this payload gets to the backend server, it basically decodes it and processes it on the system. So let's say uh, we create let's say we create we see RC is fun and we convert this to base sixty four. Let's say we send this to the backend server. The backend server is going to see this and it's going to then decode it again. So it's going to do something like, depending on the programming language, it's going to decode it and it's going to get this back. And whatever it gets back as the decoded value, 
it's going to run it directly so that's the idea of how this works then we should make sure our self net card listening for connection net card is basically listening for a reverse shell which is a way you listening for incoming connections to your system and once we add this encoded payload to contain our payload which we got from the python file then we can refresh our cookie and refresh the page so once you refresh the page you notice this page keeps loading if you do it correctly it keeps loading and looks like it's not giving you any output then you can head over to your terminal and if you check you can see that we got a connection to our system from this IP address which should be the address of the machine so if you head over to check the address of your machine and it's 10 10 which is the same IP address that I got the connection back from so now I have gotten a reverse shell or initial foothold on the machine. So once you can do is basically check your working directory, then you can head over to the user zone directory and use the files. Then you can find the flag.txt. So you can head over and cast the flag.txt to copy the contents, and that will be the answer to this question now you can do something like video installation although it's not required for this machine you can just try it for the phone like we did earlier in an earlier tutorial this user also belongs to the lxd group there's a nice resource by hacking articles which explains how to leverage this and get a root shell so that's that about the eight which is insecure visualization Thank you for watching and we'll see you at the 9th.